Hi, Mr. Fitz here. Hope you're going well. In this first tutorial of our series, I'm going to show you how we build this basic box in Inventor. So I've provided you here with a number of views on the drawing. Here is what we call an isometric view. This shows the dimensions in three dimensions. So this box is 100 mil long, 50 mil wide and 40 millimeters deep. It's hollowed out and is two millimeters thick all the way around. So in engineering talk, THK means thick. TYP means typical, which means that's the typical thickness all the way around the box. These dimensions are also shown in these views here. So top view is looking straight down on our box. Front view is looking from the front here, and the right view is looking in this direction. This is what we call a orthographic projection, or is used commonly in a standard engineering drawing. So let's have a go at building this using Inventor. So let's flick to Inventor, and we'll start by creating a new part. This is a single box and it is most commonly going to be a part. So up the top here in your templates, choose part. Standard is our standard template for parts. Just check that the units here are millimeters. If these are in inches or something else, then talk to Mr. Fitz. It's most likely that your templates are not correctly set up if that's not in millimeters. All right, let's go. Let's create this file. Okay, new file. Best practice. One of the first things you do when you create a new file is save it. It's not uncommon for programs to crash and you will lose your work. So first thing you do is save. Let's put this onto your H drive or somewhere safe. I'm going to put this into my documents and call this a box and save. Okay, let's go. So if you've watched my earlier videos, we always begin a model, in almost every case, with a sketch, 2D sketch. So let's click on 2D sketch. Once you click this, it brings up your work planes. So these are coordinate planes. You remember these from maths when you're talking about an x-axis and a y-axis. These are our planes. So we've got an x-y plane, y-z, and a x-z plane. It doesn't always matter which plane you draw on to start with. You can kind of pick and choose, but I'm going to choose today, I'm going to choose this plane. And the view will orientate so your 0, 0 of your coordinates starts in the center here. Now, my box is fairly straightforward. I'm going to start building this by sketching a rectangle. I'm going to do it as the base, so it's 100 by 50. Let's go back to Inventor. Now, rectangle. You've got a few options here of different kinds of rectangles. You can do a rectangle between two points, so I can go from here out. Like so. Or another way to do a rectangle, which I tend to like, I tend to like to have my planes in the center of my part. I can do a rectangle with a two point center. And have a look at this one. If I click on the center point and drag it out, this is going to make my rectangle in the center of my planes which typically I like to do. This is symmetrical and I can use these planes later for various things. Okay, best practice, I generally click and draw a basic sketch of my shape. So I've got the rectangle. It has no other information in here. So what I need to do is give it some dimensions to tell it the size. 
So click on dimension. I know that this length, if I click on this line and drag up, click again, this length is going to be 100 millimeters. Click on the green and it is bigger than I've drawn, so zoom out. 100, cool. Now let's add our other dimension, which is 50 millimeters. Click on this side, drag it out, click again, and 50. Cool. You'll notice once I add these dimensions in, the colors of my sketch turn from black to blue. Blue means good, blue means that it is what we call constrained. In other words, it has the information it needs. If I click on a blue line and try and drag it, if you're in dimension, just right click and go escape or press escape on your keyboard if you are still in that command. If I click and drag a blue line, it won't go anywhere. If it's black, then I'm able to move it. But in this case, 150, beautiful, looks good. Finish. Let's finish our sketch. Okay, as you may have seen in my earlier videos, a common feature to turn a two-dimensional sketch into a solid is extrude. So click on extrude. Now, it straight away assumes that my closed sketch is what I want to extrude. How high does this have to be? Let me double check. It's going to be 40 millimeters high, the height of my box. So I can type in 40. You don't have to worry about typing in mm for millimeters. It knows it's going to be 40 millimeters and go OK. And this is very close to what I'm looking for in my box. Now, if I press the shift key on my keyboard whilst holding or clicking it and holding my middle mouse button, so say that again, if I click and hold my middle mouse button and press the shift key, I can rotate my model. So you see the little icon changes? This allows me to spin my model around. Another way to do this is to click on the orbit command here on the side of your screen. That will let you spin your model. To get out of a command, press escape. But easiest way is to click your middle mouse button and press and hold shift on your keyboard and you'll spin it. That helps you navigate. All right, let's hollow our box out. The tool we're gonna to use for this is the shell tool. This is a really useful tool. If I click on the shell tool, it brings up a dialog box. Now, before I do anything, you can see already that this tool is trying to hollow out my part. Faintly, you can see that it's trying to cut the inside out. This tool basically forms a hollow inside your model. What I can do to open up the top of my box is to remove the top face. So in Inventor, on the bottom left, it always tells you what to do next. It says select services to remove. So I want to remove this top face. Click on it. And all of a sudden you see the preview, it's trying to get rid of my top face. All I have to do now is set my thickness. So I can recall that I had a two millimeter thick box. Press OK. And now I can spin my model and have a look. And there we go, I've created my box. Hollowed out. 100 by 50 by 40 and 2 millimeters thick. Cool, you finished the first tutorial. You can see on the side here, I've got two features I've used. I've used an extrusion. At any point in time, you can come into your model and you can look at this tree, which shows what you have done. 
So if I click on extrusion, I can click on this little plus, which expands it, and you can see that there's a sketch. That is the first sketch I created. Here it is. You can see that I've put the dimensions in. At any point in time, I can go in, if I use my right mouse button and click, I can edit this feature. So if, for instance, you've made a mistake and I want to make this 100, 150, edit my sketch, double click on 100, make it 120, click on the tick, finish my sketch, and my box updates. One of the biggest advantages of this program is what we call parametric. At any point in time, I can go back and change a feature and it automatically updates. That means it is parametric. Another example, if I right click on shell, I can edit this and change the thickness of my box. So if I want a thicker box to so say be three millimeters, I can go OK and my box will be thicker. Awesome. Make sure you save your work. Once you're done, show Mr. Fitz. If you have any problems, come and see me. Otherwise, well done. See you on the next one.